Good evening, everybody. It's another Thursday night. So everyone knows what that means. That means tomorrow's garbage day. But it also means that it's Facebook with Frank again uh, for another exciting Same Bat Channel, Same Bat Time program. Uh, we continue to try to bring you uh, amazing guests, amazing resources, uh, and wonderful uh, people to share everything that's great about this, this area and our community. And tonight is no exception. We have a very special guest, as you see her uh, on here already, smiling, and that's Shelly Cantrell. Shelly is has a great title, by the way. She is the Brand Innovation Officer. I need to get one of those titles. Maybe we need to add that to our executive council on PTA. That's pretty cool. And um, tonight, Shelly is going to, uh, we're actually going to do a two-parter. This is our first two-parter we're ever going to do. And this week, we're going to talk about all the amazing services, programs, uh, that our Hillsborough County Public Libraries carries every day, uh, not just special times of the year, but all the time. We're going to talk about what the libraries are doing, if they're open, and how they're open, and how you can access all their information. Tonight, we're going to speak specifically on, uh, on, on students. So we're going to be talking about what uh, student services, student programs, and everything that revolves around our students and our children and our kids. So before we start on that, I am gonna jump into our announcements and give Shelly a few more minutes to uh, wait. Uh, and, and I know she's not nervous, but just maybe we can kind of throw her off her game a little bit tonight. Um, so here we go, we're gonna go with the announcements. Amy, I'm gonna throw a couple of these at you just so you know, so be ready. Uh, PTA Motion Virtual 5K, why don't you talk about this since that was, uh, uh, you're the All right. You're, you're the uh, it's still in it's still in effect, guys. So you have until the 31st. It is PT in Motion Virtual 5K spring into action. Um, the whole month of March, we're encouraging our local units to become more active. So um, the local unit with the highest participation will receive the presidential trophy, which is that picture you see on the screen. Um, a grant for $300, which I know could go a long way for a lot of schools and bragging rights, which is always really fun. Um, register on HCC PTA Member Hub. It is on our website. It is on our Facebook page. It is in our um, bio, a link in our bio on our, our HCC Instagram account. Like it's everywhere. So uh, and if you can't find it, just email Frank and he'll send it to you. But make sure you register for your PTA. And if you're at two different ones or three different ones, you can do a percentage to each if you'd like. Um, and if you don't have a PTA that you support, you can always do Robinson High School PTSA because that's the best. Yeah, no, that's, I, I need to cut you off right there. I'm going <laughs> to mute you somewhere. Um, she's shameless plug. You're never talking about this again. You, <laughs> you let me talk. That's what so I'm going to do. If you have more than one child and you mm -hmm. want to sign up, you can still tell them that you love them both the same by signing yeah. up for two different 50 schools. 50. 50 exactly. 50. <laughs> so. Or 60 40, depending, right? So okay. Listen. So I'm going to let, I'm going to let, I, you know what, I'm not going to let Amy talk about this because she's going to yell at everybody. So um, nice. spring break, goose chase winners. Oh, we did have winners. Okay. I we, thought we were. So we did. Ahead. We had, we have a couple winners um, from our spring break goose chase challenge, which was like a scavenger hunt and you could do it with your family. It was like, it was socially distanced. Um, the Perez goose hunters with 10,300 points and team munchkin with 1200 points but each team will receive an amazon fire 7 tablet so wow thank you for participating um we'll do another one we maybe we'll make it a little shorter maybe it was too long i don't know um i tend to go go big or go home so but um they did really well with uh all of the different things they had to do they like had to find two black cars parked next to each other there was like lots of fun things so well yeah what was the craziest thing that they had to do I, they had to, they had to prove a theory on a chat, like on a <laughs> chalkboard and they, they did like a mathematical theory on a window and I don't know, there were a lot. They had to have a dance party with perfect strangers. Like they had to, they had to do a bunch of stuff. So it was, it was fun. It was something different. So we're always trying, Actually, we're just throwing it out there. If you have ideas, let us know. We'll Put it together. Something different is really yeah. good right now too. So yeah. we're good. Uh, congratulations, Perez Goose Hunters. I love that name, Team Munchkin. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, uh, that's amazing. Amazing. Uh, Amazon Fire Seven tablet. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't realize that they were going to get a Fire uh, tablet. I didn't realize we approved that, but that's awesome. So <laughs> shows to go that I don't pay attention in our meetings. Nope. 
Oh, uh, I get to talk again. No, no, no. I'm talking about this one. All right. So, so because normally you do. Uh, mm -hmm. This month, uh, on well, coming up on April 6th, uh, the next uh, book club meeting with Alicia Oates, our VP of Advocacy, who continues to be amazing at, at the books that are being given out, as well as all the other programs and, and events that she does. This month's book is The Hate You Give. I'm going to talk about it because I am unfortunately not reading it. So Shelly's going to yell at me. I am listening to it. And uh, it's, it's very real. Uh, it's a great story. I've gotten through, I want to say nine chapters. And uh, I am like, I, I keep trying to put it on during work and I can't concentrate listening to it. But uh, I would encourage everyone to really pick it up, put it on audio, whatever you have to do. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot to this book and uh, I didn't realize there was a movie to it, but I encourage, uh, all of you out yeah. there to, um, and the definitely. first, the first 10 to register and the 10, the event will get a $10 Uber Eats voucher. Oh, can so, I do that? I want to do that. You, you know, <laughs> never let me do anything. It's you're, mean. you're, you're exempt. <laughs> I'm exempt. Wow. Yeah. I have to go, hold on. I have to go look that up. Shelly, I might need a uh, dictionary. <laughs> okay, breaking news. Breaking news. I am not, I am definitely not the, uh, uh, the Channel 8 news, breaking news guy. Uh, attention, bylaw changes. So as of this past weekend, uh, the PTA Board of Directors, which includes your Hillsborough County Council President and all of our County Council Presidents, we, uh, we voted. So if you're happy with this, I want to hear applause. If you're mad, um, you can blame Amy. Uh, but the Florida PTA Board of Directors uh, did remove the in-person meeting requirements. I know a lot of you were asking about this. Uh, it was still, we were hopeful to be able to meet in person for one meeting. Uh, for uh, most of us, I know that was still something that was uh, really uh, difficult to ask for. So you can do your last meeting virtually. And uh, we just want you to have your meeting. Get your officers elected. Uh, get your budget passed. Get ready for summer. Uh, get ready for Florida Leadership Conference. And uh, you can do all that through the, um, uh, the miracle of Zoom. Yes. So, Walt Disney. Uh, they, they, and they don't have to change their bylaws. So if you've already changed your bylaws and they're current right now, um, they don't need to update them. They can wait. They've been grandfathered in. But if, been, you're, if you are ready to change your bylaws and this is your year, then um, you can use this new this new format. It is on our website and on the Florida PTA website. So check it out. And, do, and why do they call it grandfather? Why can't it be grandmothered in anymore? I mean, let's let's blame somebody else other than the grandfathers or, you know. <laughs> this is gonna get hostile in a little bit. Oh so, my goodness. PTA in motion, save the date. So this is April 10th. Uh, April 10th, Lake Rogers Park in Odessa. Oh, that's close to me now. It's off road. It's going to be fun. I love this yeah. little park. It's, it's a great little park. It's up by Walker Metal Magnet. I used to go run around the, there's a big lake that you go around Lake Rogers and it's beautiful. So um, if you can come, please, please attend. It will have a good time and wear purple because we will be celebrating the month of the military. Child that's right. Very good. April. Thank you for reminding so. everyone, including myself, that uh, yeah. I will attend this one. Definitely. I know I have to be at the stadium for WrestleMania that night. Oh, yeah. But um, that means I have the day off. I have the morning You're off. Good. You're good. 9 a.m. Everybody's welcome. You don't even uh, have to be a PTA member. You can just come and hang out and walk yeah, with us. Seriously, listen, if you're a PTA member, go grab your neighbor. Go, go grab, just grab somebody off the street and bring them. You're fun. When yeah, I say me, I mean me. But I, I think Amy will give you extra points for the next scavenger hunt if you grab somebody off the street and bring them to this. That's the truth. That is the <laughs> truth. And if you bring snacks, I give you more points as well. Oh, yeah. Because I'm always hungry. Yes, we will. and not, nothing healthy. Okay, listen. You know, let's be so. Uh, have you paid your count? You could take that. Have you paid your council dues? <laughs> All of you have done a great job this year. I know, uh, we, we have continued to get more council dues in. Uh, if you haven't seen, we have sent you the invoices through regular mail, through email. We posted it. Uh, you should have your invoice somewhere. We ask you, this is our really our own only way of paying for a lot of things that we put together. Uh, as a county council. And uh, so please look for that. If you can't find your invoice and you're, and you're honest and kind and still want to pay for it, reach out to Amy Marie or I or anybody and we'll make sure to, uh, to or Kale McDonough, uh, Mc, McDonough. Treasurer. Uh, treasurer. Not, not president and VP of operations, but 
treasure. That's right. Uh, and her email's right there. So let you know, her do it. Let yeah. her do it. So anyway, I think that is it. Wow, that seems short. We just made it long. So um, well, good. We're back. All right. So uh, year, uh, years ago, when we in introduced our guest, her name was Shelly Contrell. It's still Shelly Contrell. And we are so thankful for you being here tonight. I'm incredibly excited because when you, we've been talking a couple times over the last couple of weeks, and I can't believe how many services and programs and just everything that the, that the library has. I remember when I was a kid, way back in the day, um, Same. going in the library just meant a bunch of books on a shelf. And it is so much more now. And there's so many more uh, other ways for our kids to not only be educated, but to be uh, entertained, I guess, if you want to use it use that and, and in, in the same way. So uh, we're going to just jump right into it. Um, Shelly, why don't you tell everybody hi and um, and a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I was, I was actually, you guys have such great energy. So thank you so much for that. I think that's fantastic. Amy is fun. I can tell you right now, she's fun. I actually wrote down the walk because I think she'd be fun to walk with. I just got to say that. And then I also have to say that audiobooks are great for everybody. If you're like me and you have to spend a lot of time in your vehicle, there is nothing better than a good audiobook to make you not hate traffic. It really does distract you and not make you want to say really horrible, hateful, ugly things in traffic. So it's something to, to definitely put on your list if you're That's not used to. Very true. Yeah, and you don't even have to check one out from the library. You can just download it, check it out on your phone and then stream it, right? Bluetooth it right into your vehicle. So it's not like you have to carry something around with you and change out discs anymore. And we have all of the latest bestsellers. So Hate You Give is definitely one of the ones that we have audiobook that you can check out. Amy's so, never said anything rude to anybody in traffic. So Me? Never. Yeah. I'm not same. I mean, I am like angelic behind the wheel. Yeah. yeah. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for having me I get that all the time people always say to me that like oh we didn't know you had that at the library and I had no idea you had and I think really what it comes down to is that we just have so much that it can be overwhelming um, so I'm hoping that we'll get to talk about specific things tonight and then maybe it'll feel a little bit more um, a little bit less overwhelming awesome yes absolutely and we'll jump right into it uh, before we start I'm sorry I'm just gonna keep just being really ridiculous here. Amy, you might want to check the scrolling. Jennifer Rogers is really throwing you under the bus. So um, anyway, <laughs> let's get right to it. Uh, Shelly, let's, let's kind of start out with some, um, some things about the library itself. So how many public libraries are actually in Hillsborough County? Sure, we have 27 libraries in Hillsborough County. Plus we have a really close relationship with um, the municipalities with Plant City and Temple Terrace. But we have 27 locations here in Hillsborough County. So we, and, we touch every part of Hillsborough County. Very good. Yeah, I, 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 I'm amazed that when I'm driving through, I see new ones that I've never seen before. And, and, and sometimes I know their names and sometimes I don't, but that's amazing. So how are libraries, how are they funded? Sure. So we are very fortunate here in Hillsborough County and our libraries are funded by a special taxing district. Um, so essentially property taxes support Hillsborough County Public Libraries. You'll okay. see us as an item on your property tax bill. Ah, so, okay. So I can yell at you is what you're saying. Okay. Gotcha. Well, no, it's a tiny really. little amount out there, but it is on there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and finally, how do you get your catalog of books, DVDs, audiobooks, materials? How do you actually get those? Sure. And you know, what I should have also said is one of the fun things that I like to do on our website, if you go to our website, hcplc.org, we actually have a library value calculator and you can type in there how many items you've checked out. Um, and it doesn't have to be throughout the year. It can just be like in one trip. So let's say you're like me and you're laying in bed and you download four magazines and two books. Um, you can type that in and it'll actually tell you what your return on investment is on just those items. So um, I think that's a really nice way of being able to kind of look and see what kind of a value um, monetarily you're getting from the library. I mean, obviously, I think you're getting a huge value educationally and culturally, um, but that's a nice way of being able to look at it from a money standpoint. So what you're saying is we shouldn't ask Amazon to sponsor us on the next week's show. 
hey, if Amazon wants to sponsor me or a library, you know, I'm not closing the door to that ever. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying that you could definitely save yourself some cash um, when you're on your Kindle. Instead of clicking purchase, you could just click download from the library and stream it in that way. I like it. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm frugal to say the least. So the current status of the libraries right now, as far as them um, being open and people coming in and out, and, and what are the safeguards that you're, you're kind of practicing? Sure. So we are really trying to offer services to every comfort level. We have curbside services where you can just um, pull up and have contact-free curbside pickup of your items. You can go online and put your stuff on hold and then just drive up and pick up your stuff. We will mail books to your home for free if you would like to just not um, visit a library, which, um, you know. awesome. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks. Wow. People people are busy, you know. That's just the, the name of the game, right? We're busy. Like, how many of us thought that life was going to slow down during the pandemic and we're still waiting for that to happen, right? I mean, I was super naive a year and a half ago thinking to myself, oh, this would be great. Maybe we'll slow down a little bit. And it never, that was just a, you know, fleeting fancy. But um, so you can have a meal to your house for free. You do have to drop them back off in one of our book drops, but you can access our book drops 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can just, you know, put it on your route when you're going into town or um, on your way to work. You can download materials from home and we have tons and tons and tons of materials for you to access from home. And then you can go come into our libraries if you're comfortable with that. Um, the majority of our libraries are now open at 25% capacity. Um, we do require you to wear a mask and you are asked to have a temperature check before you walk in the doors. But once you're inside, you can browse items, you can use our public computers. Um, so we're really trying to offer some sort of access that um, helps everybody and awesome. reaches everybody. That's amazing. Yes, that is that is awesome. I didn't realize that you mailed stuff. That's, yes. oh my goodness. Yes, in a pinch, that's really nice. There's certain things that I feel, you know, everybody has their own um, likes and dislikes. You know, I've everybody's in a different school of thought. Some people like to hold a book. Some people are fine reading when digitally. Um, I'm kind of, I'm more digital, definitely, except for when it comes to cookbooks or DIY books. I feel like I have to actually hold those and see the pictures really well. Um, And, you know, I've heard great things about having the books mailed to your home. I think that that is a real time saver. Wow, that that's awesome! So I I did not know that. So if we uh, got nothing out of this except that, that is right. absolutely the coolest thing I've heard today, and probably all, probably all month. Like that is that's awesome. Yep, so free. my wife can get deliveries of what is it, Lulu? I don't know what the dresses are called or Lulu whatever. Oh, Lulu Row. She can get those, and I'll get my books from the library. Is that nice, yeah. Yeah. No. Mm. Anyhow, what you drinking there, Amy? <laughs> Apple juice. Apple juice. So let's get into some of your specific, uh, uh, specific programs and services that you do, because I want our, our parents and our caregivers to know exactly what they can offer to their students. And, and sure. probably the students know a lot of this stuff already, but let's just, for some of us, we need to get reacquainted. So sure. what is a hall pass? Yes. So hall pass is so important. So um, years ago, a few years ago, we um, entered into a partnership with Hillsborough County Public Schools. And what we did was that um, we basically made every single student's student ID number a library card. So if you have a lunch number, a student ID number that's issued by Hillsborough County Public Schools, which that does apply to charter school students and homeschool students, some homeschool students as well. Um, that is instantly your library card. So that helps children not having to have to wait for a parent to be able to take them into the library to apply for a card. Um, They don't need a physical card, so it's not something that they could lose. And it's a number that they're already comfortable with, a number that they use on a regular basis. And they use it at school to access databases at school. I know at school they use it to access things like Myon, Um, And so they can seamlessly just use that number through the library to check out items. They can use it to um, access all of our free databases. Um, And there's so many. 
Um, the ones that I know that in my house we use pretty regularly are World Book um, and uh, some of the science facts online, especially when we're working on science projects. Um, and it's and we also have my on through the library as well. Um, but I, my kid loves it just to type in her number and stream music. That's what she uses it for the most, probably. That's awesome. So you can leave it to a middle schooler, right? To just want to stream yeah, music. I didn't even what know you thought? could do that. Did you know you could do that, Frank? Did not know you could do that. Uh, I'm going to go no on that, um, Alex Trebek. So <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> no, I mean, brand new. I, I knew that the students did have, they could use their, their, their number because uh, my son's done that, but I didn't realize you could stream music. That's pretty cool too. Um, and what about um, late fees? I know that's always been an issue before, but what yes, about late fees? We have none. What? Yes, so we have no late fees. Um, we went fine free a couple years back and um, we, we don't have late fees. And, you know, honestly, with the hall pass program, we never put late fees into that anyway, because we understand um, we understand how it is. I mean, I think as a parent, every, every kid has lost a book. I mean, it's just the way of the world. I mean, I work for the library and we have lost books um, or we've been late returning things. And so we understood that kids would be checking out books with their hall pass cards and that parents would not necessarily always be with them during those transactions. Um, so we never put any late fees in on those. And then we also went late fine free for all of our customers. Um, what we do is you will have um, like a hold placed on your account. Basically, if you have books for a very long time, I think right now it's pretty much up to like six months that you would have to have a book in your possession without returning it before your account would get blocked. And this is not retroactive to people like me, right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, Definitely not. I'm okay, guilty then, too. Yeah. And, but digital stuff, if you're checking out stuff digitally, it automatically yes, it anyway, floats right? back into cyberspace and returns on its own. Okay. And I mean, our digital collections are are insane. I think that people don't realize how much great stuff you can get in our digital collections. You know, your kid can access. Not only can your kid go on there and access a book, right? They can access a book that was assigned to them. They can access a Sunshine State Reader. They can access, um, a, you know, those are slam books. They can access a book that maybe their teacher has just selected. They can go on there and access things like Facts on File, which will help them with research for social studies projects, science projects, um, any kind of research papers that they may be doing. Um, they can go on there and access you know, I think we talk so much about what um, they need for school and what they need to be successful and what they need for homework. Um, but sometimes we don't really think about what can they access from the library for fun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they can go on there and access facts about animals. They can go on there and um, stream movies and educational movies and they can download music. I mean, my kid is a huge fan of Hoopla. She downloads the Hoopla app. Um, and all of the latest albums are on there and she can stream them um, for a week or two and then she can return them at her leisure when she's tired of them and get new ones. And um, it saves us from having to pay for any of those subscription music services. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of stuff that we have to offer digitally. One of the most important things that we offer digitally that I definitely hear from parents all the time, and you can stop me if I'm rambling, so nope, feel free. Not at all. This is amazing information. Thanks. Well, one of the things that we offer, and I hear from parents all the time that they did not understand that we offered it or they didn't realize that it was free, and that is tutor.com. I can't really say enough good things about tutor.com because you know, my kids in middle school now, and I have always thought that, you know, I did okay in school as a kid and I did okay in college, but man, let me tell you something. When she brings home some of her homework, it is very hard <laughs> to dig into the recesses of your mind and remember how to do it. I mean, I don't you know, I don't deal with some of her math problems on a regular basis. You know, that's just the reality that I'm in on a daily basis. I'm not doing math of that 
kind or type on a regular basis. And tutor.com offers your kid live one-on-one -on -one free tutoring. And that, in my opinion, is a huge, huge money saver. It's a huge time saver. You know, there's nights where I do work. Um, there's evenings when, um, you know, we're busy or what have you, and she needs help with um, a paper or with researching something or, you know, whatever else she has going on. And she can log on to there. There's no video. It's just all through chat. She can take a photo of her assignment that she's working on. She can upload it into the chat and the tutor will, she can hear the audio of the tutor and the tutor will sit there and work through the entire homework with her within that one hour period. There's no personal information exchanged and all the tutors that um, tutor.com have um, are all um, professionals that tutor through their service. Um, and it's for any grade and any subject. They will match you with the appropriate person for that subject and for that grade level. And I think that that's really something that um, could be utilized more um, by parents in Hillsborough County and by students. Is and it, it's free. It's 24 hours a day? No. It's not, it's in the evenings. I believe they start okay. at, don't quote me, you may have, I will have to look on the website just to be sure. But, I'm pretty sure they start at um, three o'clock in the afternoon. They go to like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. That's good. And it is in I mean, the evenings after that's school. That's when they're studying. So yeah, mm -hmm. I know my daughter's up late studying. It's, act it's actually been posted in the chat. So um, okay, good. I've got lots of posts. Yeah, that, that is awesome. I mean, you- I had no idea. That's amazing. That is you awesome. answered the questions I was about to ask. Was, I appreciate you doing it. So let's just kind of <laughs> real quick uh, hit the last two things you hit. So everybody who, who didn't get to hear them. Uh, Projects. The end of the year obviously means tests, but it also means school projects. Uh, the library is a place to go, resources, information. And you don't even have to go. You can do it online through your phone, through your computer. Yeah. Uh, and then tutoring. Um, we all need tutoring. If I had tutoring, free tutoring, I could have been a C student. Instead, you know. Same. <laughs> <laughs> And, and so the hours you said are in the evening, so they're conducive to a lot of our students, uh, their schedules as far as, at, like Amy Marie said, doing their homework when they're actually doing it for real. Yes, and you know, let me say this, sometimes it's not about if a parent can help them or not. Some, I mean, some of us, you know, our kids just learn better from somebody else. And so I think that there's something to be said about having a free resource where your kid can just work with a stranger. I know that sounds weird, but I, you know, for us, sometimes that just works better. I'll get frustrated over trying to explain something that maybe I'm not explaining correctly or in a manner that my child is able to accept. Um, and so I think it's nice that there is an option for a third party that can come in and help in any subject matter. And I, I can't remember if you said it or not. I apologize if you did. Uh, safeguards on tutoring. They're not gonna ask you. No personal information is exchanged. It's only grade and subject. Very good, because I, I, you kind of led me that when you said, you know, it sounds weird, but it's it's true when you have somebody else on the that you don't know very well. Yes, um, definitely. Well, that that is very cool. So now, again, as I said earlier, when I walked into to a library when I was young, I saw a bunch of books. Now there's computers everywhere. Okay, very different from from that. Uh, can the students utilize the computers? I know you mentioned earlier about their their card and. Um, what do you recommend that they do before they start accessing them? Is there any videos or anything they should watch first? Yeah, sure. So we do have public computers at all of our libraries. Some of our, um, uh, and then all of our libraries have wireless um, free internet. And now during COVID, things are definitely a little bit different. So right now, kids um, cannot enter the library without a parent or guardian accompanying them, right? A parent has to be with them in order to enter our libraries. Um, but they can access the computers um, and they can print stuff. So if they wanted to come in and do an assignment and then print it off or, you know, some of the, um, I think it's important to talk about if we have some e-learners out there. Um, I know that um, there's a lot of printing that needs to happen, right? There's tons of printing that needs to happen in some of the grades. Um, and that's something that can be done at the library as well. Um, if they don't have access to that at home. 
Um, the one of the best things that I can recommend for public computer use is that on the library's website in the kids um, under the kids page and in the teens page, we actually have something called NetSmarts and it's kind of like a video tutorial that helps kids understand how to stay safe online. Um, and I would recommend that uh, regardless of whether they're going to use a computer in the library or not. Um, I know that we have in addition to that, we have tons of resources, books, videos um, that really will talk to kids about what's happening in the World Wide Web. Um, and obviously, I'm very passionate about that. I think that's a, um, an important discussion to have. Um, I mean, I think we all know. I think we get kind of passive about it because we're so used to it as adults. You know, we see it all the time. We kind of almost are glazed over. Um, but I think uh, it's a really great resource to be able to use from the library's website for free. And you can watch that video at home. Awesome. And I and kind of segue, and, and you mentioned again earlier, a lot of things you already mentioned earlier, but I want to make sure. We, sorry. You, no, you did a great job. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, that, that really is because it's it needs to be repeated because it's so important. Wi-Fi. I mean, this is if you yeah, just need Wi-Fi. Huge. Wi huge. I, I, yeah. We did share that the other day, which is amazing what you guys are doing with the um, hotspots. Yes, we're trying to get people access to wireless internet. We understand how important it is right now, especially. Um, not only can you access it in our in our libraries, you can access it from our parking lots as well. Many of our parking lots um, have park and surf, and that is um, you can access those uh, locations on our website hcplc.org, which is in back of me too. Um, and you can pull up in one of our parking lots and be able to access wireless internet. And I think that that's really nice if you have your own device. The other thing that we've been doing is we circulate wireless hotspots. So you can actually check out a small wireless hotspot and take it home. And that will support up to five devices inside of your home. So if you don't have wireless access at your home, you can bring this home and pretty much everybody in your family can be surfing the net at home. That's amazing especially if you, you know, you have multiple children doing e-learning, that's a great resource. Yes. Yes, and I think that's a really, really important point that Amy just made because, you know, all of a sudden we got hit with like bandwidth issues inside of our own homes that most of us wouldn't have even ever thought about. Um, and so, yes, Wi-Fi hotspots can definitely help boost that and can help, help to have multiple people in your home working at the same time amazing yeah i love that um i actually used the wi-fi at the library the other night to do something while my daughter was doing something i was like i need wi-fi but i don't want to go in anywhere yeah so that's a great like if you're like me and i can't have outside stimuli while i'm writing like you need that quiet time um yeah. that's great it was a great option so that is really cool. I, I i love there's just so many differences from uh, from even 10 years ago. And then of course, as, as most of us who have kids don't recognize the library and all the amazing resources it has. So, uh, so kind of moving with that thought, uh, many years ago, we walked in education, uh, especially at a library, man, it could be boring, no fun. I mean, it's, you're learning your times tables, you're learning your Dewey Decimal, whatever you want to say. Uh, but times have obviously changed. They've been, uh, people have been creative and incorporated fun entertainment with education. What are some ways the library meets the challenges uh, especially to assist our parents who may just need a few moments, you know, but they still want our, their, their kids to be challenged and educated uh, to educate and still entertain our students. So what are some things you could think the library offers, uh, be it games, things like that? Yeah, so this is the category that I could definitely go on for days on. Um, so I think that um, a lot of people forget that we have live virtual programming. Um, so we bring in outside performers. We have um, children's theater that happens live virtually. We have story times. We have um, craft programs, cooking programs, um, educational lectures. We, we have a huge array of live virtual programming that you can see on our website and you can log in and enjoy. And most of it um, we work out and we um, put on our YouTube channel um, for a few weeks after the program so that way you can access it at any time that's best for you. So that's definitely something that I would want to plug because live virtual programming um, is fun because it's something different. It's not 
um, you know, a TV show that you guys watch as a family, or it's not, um, you know, a game that your kid plays on the computer on a regular basis. You know, they could actually watch a live play um, sitting there and you guys could interact with the performers and you can ask questions and then you can discuss it afterwards. So I think that live virtual programming is number one. Then um, we have an insane amount of resources that still offer you the, the benefits and the literacy benefits of a book, but they have other components to them that make them more exciting. So we have things like box books where the book will read to you um, and it has like a little speaker built into it and you basically hit a button and it reads the book to your child while your child is flipping the pages of the book and it's all self-contained in one thing. Now for older kids, when you're getting to chapter books um, and above, um, you know, obviously you could check out either download the audiobook on a phone or um, whatever's most comfortable for you on your computer, or you could check out the actual discs and then follow along and above. We have things called um, educational games and models, um, which are some of my favorite things. And um, a lot of people don't know we have them because they only live at a few branches and you really have to go online to our catalog and dig around and look at them. Um, but there is a link from the books and more page. Um, so you can click directly to it. We circulate things like skeletons. We circulate um, anatom anatomical uh, models. We circulate um, bugs and, um, you know, just crazy like biology models and earth science models and um, educational games and things that you wouldn't think to purchase for your home, but that may be great to bring home so that your kid has some sort of a 3D model of what it is, of the concept that you're trying to teach them. Um, Make Another it really thing. good right now, like with e-learning, like it yes. might be something that they're just not understanding because they're e-learning. But if you checked out this 3D model and brought that home, and it really could bring it alive for them. Yes, exactly. That's, that's awesome. Yes, exactly. And even part of that um, collection, there's telescopes, there's microscopes. Um, so it doesn't, you know, it wouldn't even have to, it could go with school, but it doesn't have to, you know, maybe you just want to stargaze and teach your kids about stargazing and do a little introductory discussion about what's out in the universe. Um, one of the other thing that um, I think parents uh, don't realize that we have, um, but that's really important for younger kids is that we have these things called launch pads and they are tablets that come in these um, nice cases that keep them safe um, and they're very sturdy and they don't need any wireless access and they cannot access the internet and they are just preloaded with educational games and they come in a variety of grade levels and subject levels. So that's something that you could hand your kid on a car ride or um, hand your kid in the house and they could sit there and play and actually learn something while they're playing and you don't have to worry about them downloading something, purchasing something accidentally, um, stumbling upon something in the, on the internet that they're not supposed to stumble upon. Um, and those are called launch pads and we really um, have a great collection of those and you can pick those up at the library as well. That's amazing. I, someone just asked what our launch pads so. Yeah, Stephanie, Stephanie. You answer. You answered that question. Yeah. That was awesome. And then yes. um, someone posted that LiveHelpForTutor.com is available from 2 p.m. to midnight. Oh, see, that's got to yeah. be one of my team members. That's I think they were paying attention and they knew to yeah. check yeah. for me. Seven yeah. days a week. Yes, that's oh, amazing. Wow. So when they forget about that assignment that they have to do on Monday. Oh yes, on, girl. On like you mean over Sunday afternoon. Yes. You, you just get them on that tutor.com and get them. Yeah. Oh, I love the no accidental Amazon purchases with those launch pads. Seriously. Yeah. That, that's Stephanie Garza. I've had that happen. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Good. I'm going to write that down. Yes. Yeah. She's, she's watching. Jeffrey's on there watching you too. So yes. uh, you got a nice, nice group. They're here. testing me. They're testing you. Uh, <laughs> one thing that we talked about uh, just before we went on and I know there's not a lot, but you wanted to mention uh, maybe some, couple things for our ESC students. Yeah. So, you know, um, for younger kids, we have something called tumble books and tumble books are like interactive kids books where it will play music and it will actually follow along in the words. And I really like those because they're very interactive 
And what I was saying earlier in our conversation is that you want to try and engage multiple senses with reading, right? And we're all not just, we're not all just, you know, like we, we, we don't all just pick up a book and read the words on the page and completely digest the information in the same respect. Um, and that's why we offer um, audio books as well. So you could actually combine them. I think parents forget to combine them. Um, sometimes when I'm trying to push my kids reading level or trying to encourage her to read something a little more challenging than what she would want to read, I will combine an audiobook with it so that the audiobook is actually reading the story to her and she can follow along in the text. And that helps the words kind of, um, well, it helps with pronunciation. It helps her to get the, um, the meanings of the words a little bit better from the context when she's hearing it instead of having to dig through it on her own. So I think that that's um, a very worthwhile thing for anybody, but also for our ESC students. Awesome. Very, very good. Um, so, so I know it's been a long year for all of us, especially a school <laughs> year, but we are, we are actually getting towards the end here. Um, so summer's coming up. Uh, anything special set up for summer? I know uh, we want to hit on Sunshine State books, which I know our parents are probably, but, but in addition to that, I mean, what does summer look like at the Hillsborough County Public Library? Sure. So let's talk about Sunshine State books first. Every year we flood the system with Sunshine State books. We plan it every year when we purchase our books. And I don't think I actually answered that earlier, is, so I will. What is a Sunshine State book? For those of us that aren't from the Sunshine State, could you explain that? Yeah, sure. So Sunshine <laughs> State Young Readers Awards. I'm pretty sure that's the correct, um, that's the correct uh, words for the acronym, right? Because there's SSYRA books. People call them slam books too. Now I am not an educator in a school sense, so I don't know the difference, but I know they use a lot of the same books for both things. But there is a committee that, um, that votes on those books, like a committee of educators throughout the state that actually works on um, gathering those titles and picks out the best titles for third through fifth grade and sixth through eighth grade every year. Gotcha. And um, I know that a lot of schools use those books for summer reading credit. They use them throughout the year for classroom reading. They use them for, um, uh, for, for different projects and stuff. And I know that um, most schools use them as a summer reading um, program through the school. Do and still, so, I'm sorry, do they still do the, um, didn't they used to have that contest, a reading contest that you yes. do? Do they still do that or? Well, for the library, you mean we do no, summer no. reading, but the schools, I think, right. still do okay. something for Sunshine State. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. Keep yeah, going. I'm, I'm pretty sorry. sure. No, that's okay. Um, but we will, we do flood the system with those books so that way there's extra copies. Um, so I always tell parents to put them on hold early wink, wink, like, you know, um, especially if you want a physical copy of them, um, because every kid wants to read those same books. They're always good books. Um, and, uh, and then the best part is what I think people forget to do is that your kid could be reading these books for school, right? Cause they're going to get school credit for it and what have you when they come back. And then they could also be using that and logging it with the library for the summer reading program so that way they're eligible to win prizes. So they're really reading the same exact books, but trying to maximize the awards that they're getting for their work over the summer. Nice. Um, Double and, Double yes. Double yeah, I mean, what? because there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you know, I feel like if your kid is opening a book over the summer and enjoying it, let's get them as much recognition as we can for putting in that effort throughout the summer. Yeah. So we actually have two um, summer reading programs. We partner with the Rays and they do reading with the Rays and kids can read and um, become eligible for free tickets um, to Rays games. And then they can use, so we're actually triple dipping, right? Because they're using these same books for school, for reading with the Rays and for summer reading with the library. This year's summer reading theme with the library is Tales and Tales. And we have amazing partners, amazing partners this year. We are partnering with um, Parks and Recreation. We are par partnering with Pet Resources and we are partnering with Zoo Tampa. 
who has generously given us quite a few free tickets to give away this summer um, as part of our summer reading program. Um, plus, the, the library itself gives out a ton of free books over the summer, and we always have a really um, healthy um, list of prizes that kids can win. iPads, um, earbuds, hoverboards, uh, Kindles, um, we've given away laptops, um, there's just a Lego Mindstorms kit. There's I just had a parents get in on this. Wow. I oh, mean, it's well, there's it's adult nuts. summer reading too, and we have giveaways Yay. for you as well. They're not, there's not as many as we have for the kids, but the adults we have the summer reading too. It's cool. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Amy and I want, we want the, uh, uh, a winery the gift card. I think we need the Yeah, hoverboard. same. Like yeah. That, is, that sounds like so much fun. I'd love yeah. to see you on hoverboard, Frank. A hoverboard. <laughs> <laughs> that is a viral video going. After I yeah. drink wine too. So oh my God. Be, Just don't it. forget to put the library logo on that viral yeah. video and tag me in it. <laughs> we will. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. I'll put it on my cast too. <laughs> Well, you know, we always talk about summer reading and all we talk about, and it's important. So don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that, you know, talking about, you know, defeating the summer slump is not important because it is important. Keeping your brain active throughout those. It seems like to a kid, it seems like such a short period of time, right? Two months, they're like, oh my gosh, summer's already over. But really you're losing a lot of information throughout those couple of months while you're, you know, on the go doing these fun activities, sleeping in or whatever is going on in your life throughout the summer. And so reading really will help them improve their skills when they return to school in the fall. But we try to make it, you know, lucrative for them. They have an opportunity to win these great prizes and they have an opportunity to log all of these um, pages and minutes that they're reading and get badges for it. So um, I always encourage summer reading. I don't think people take enough advantage of it. I, I agree uh, 100%. I, I don't do as much as I wish I did before. When I was a kid, I loved reading and it's just, it, it becomes a time thing for me. So, uh, so I, I'm as guilty as anybody else. Anything else in the summer that you can think of? I know it's, it's, a, it's kind of a hit or miss right now with COVID, but is there any, uh, I know in the past you guys had Lego events and things like that is can we look forward to to in-person type things or is that still kind of no i don't think that we will bring any in-person programming back for a while still um, but we do have live virtual programming that we'll be doing over the summer so we'll still do a lot of our large performers um, they'll just be performing virtually um, and then the zoo is doing some really great animal encounters with us virtually as well um, so there's, there is great programming, um, that you'll be able to access and then you can either access it while it's happening, or you can access it afterwards when you have the moment to. Now you have small, I know like the, the library I'm close to is Jimmy B. Keel. Uh, they have smaller rooms. Do a lot of libraries have smaller rooms where maybe students or parents can have meetings, groups, reading, whatever it may be? Yes, all of our libraries technically have meeting rooms um, and study rooms. Um, it's just that during COVID, they're not accessible. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but soon, soon enough, I think that, you know, we're, we're following a really um, gradual, um, concentrated effort to really bring services back slowly um, and methodically, because obviously we just are trying to keep everybody as safe as possible. Absolutely. Um, but yes, in the all of our branches have study rooms and that is something that you can access in the future. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Very, very PTA parents. Um, sooner than later, there's another area for you to go meet. Um, so I think, I know Jeffrey was putting some links up and um, I think Stephanie was too. Uh, okay. If somebody wants to find their nearest public library. Um, HCPLC.org. If you take anything away from today, just remember the website because the website has everything that you need and you can even live chat with a librarian who will answer your question for you so if you can't find something that I talked about tonight or if you forgot about it you can just literally go to our website and get lost on there with all of the great things that you'll be discovering and something else hopefully I'm right when I say this if I'm wrong I'm going to look bad uh, many of our 
many of uh, those that work in the library, they're doing it for free. They're doing it as volunteers. No, our library employees are county employees. Are they? Okay. I wasn't yeah. sure if some people, because I know the, the students were able to at one point uh, go in there and, and help out and work and get volunteer hours. So Yes, we do offer volunteer avenues for Bright Futures hours. Okay. Um, so that is something that we have, obviously right now we, we do not, right. but yes, that is something that we have offered and we will offer again. Um, but no, all of our library employees are um, county employees and our employees um, have actually um, not only been keeping our libraries up and running throughout the past year for the pandemic, but they've also been lending their support to the emergency operations um, that are happening within the county. Awesome. That's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Amy, anything? Um, you know, one thing I didn't hear you mention was um, the language uh, how they can access, is it Mango? Oh yeah, Mango Languages, yeah. sure. Yeah. I, um, I have an IB student and we're French and I don't speak French. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a great resource as well. So if you have a student or even a student that wants to learn Russian or whatever, I have a friend whose daughter is a homeschooler and she wanted to learn Russian. And so- Yeah, these are some yeah. great kids. I mean- <laughs> This is amazing. I wish I had that kind of ambition. <laughs> Me as well. I'm just saying that's pretty impressive. Let's just be honest about it. But yes, you're absolutely right. Mango languages, you can um, you access it for free. That's like the statement that I'm using tonight. For you can free. download an app on your phone. Out, it's all free. Yeah, all the time. It's all free. Um, and so you can download the app on your phone and it will give you short, quick tutorials and you can learn a different language. And there is a ton of languages to choose from. There's even pirate. Pirate's the one that we joke about the most because you can learn how to talk pirate on there. So we always advertise that during Gasparilla season. Um, it's important if you live in Tampa to not I mean, pirate. So I, I see where you're going with that. Yes, but, but, but yes, it can help with Spanish classes, French classes, Latin classes. Um, you know, I guess those are probably the most popular languages German. that kids learn in school, German. And I know that a lot of kids are looking into Russian now and Chinese is a really big thing for people mm -hmm. to be able to use Mandarin actually. Mandarin, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so, all of that is free, again, yes. free. Yes. All of these resources are free at the library yes. and so many are virtual. And I think that's the one of the most important things to take away from this is that they're free and they're virtual. You don't have to, you don't have to see anybody, you don't have to touch anybody, you don't have to talk to anybody. You can just know nope. resource is on your website. So it's amazing. Yes, and awesome. you should take advantage of them. And you know, if you get overwhelmed with our website, just follow us on Facebook at Tampa Hills Lib because we always put little snippets up on our mm -hmm. um, on our Facebook page that'll give you like quick tips and tricks on how to utilize our resources in the best way. Well, the, the one I just saw, the GoPro, that was Oh, cool. yes. I had no idea. You can, if you're like, you're going on a trip or you're going out and you're doing a kayak tour or something and you need a GoPro, you can go check one out at the library. Yeah, you should have people check them out before your um, your monthly walks. Oh. And then they could be doing some like nature photography yeah. while they're out there. Exactly. So I, that is something I would not never even have guessed that I could go do at the library. So that, that is really, really cool. I mean, that's wow. <laughs> I mean, that, that you even thought about right? that for a while. I'm going to go rent one. I'm going to rent one. I'm going to go check one out and I'm going to put it on your, I'm going to put well, it on I'm going bed. on Mango. I'm going to learn a new <laughs> language tonight. So. I, I got to get going here. Too. Um, so let's real quick um, kind of go over for everybody to um, tell everybody kind of what we talked about. So if they didn't get some of this, they can go back and watch this later. We talked about the hall pass for our students and their ability to, to check out books with just their student number. Um, we talked about in the school year projects, things like that. You have plenty of resources for school projects. So if you're a parent or a caregiver and and your child is struggling with doing a project and you're looking at it and have no idea what they're building. Um, th this is a great place. Uh, also tutor, tutor.com. I know Jeffrey Huggins was really uh, throwing a lot of information on that. Totally free, seven days a week. Uh, I don't remember the hours. 2 p.m. to midnight every single Yeah, day. so I was even, I was shortchanging it and that's much longer time period. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and, that is. Um, yeah. Jen is asking if the hive is open. It is not open yet. No. 
Not yet. But we will be back in action at some point. Is that Beyonce stuff? Something from Beyonce, the hive? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm too old to understand what that reference would have been. So, <laughs> well, they call it the no. Beehive, right? Yes, okay. the Hive is our maker spaces, oh, um, cool. and we have maker spaces at our libraries. We also have recording studios at our libraries. What? Um, yes. Oh, wow! <laughs> and our cool. maker spaces have things like 3D printers and sewing machines, and um, uh, there's tons of different stuff. There's uh, soon to be laser cutters and CNC routers and tons of different um, equipment that you can come in and create with. So maybe wow. something you couldn't like feasibly own, but you Correct. can come in and you know how to use it. You can come in and use it. That, yes. And, mm -hmm. and we'll teach you how to use it as well. Well, and we're going to talk all about parent resources next week, which yes. is super exciting. We're yeah, that's the fun that. stuff. There's so, so much yeah. we had to do two of these. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, 100%. As you guys can see, I mean, there is so much. Um, so tutoring, uh, computers, Wi-Fi. Uh, for your, if you just want to come in with your own device or if you want to sit in the parking lot like Amy Marie uh, and use the Wi-Fi, that's fine. Mm -hmm. They got it there. Um, what else do we have? Uh, lots of games to check, check out, out, online programs. Oh, Go ahead, I'm sorry. You can check out a uh, hotspot. So if you're struggling with getting your student, you know, access to maybe they have a school computer and you don't have access to the Wi-Fi, you're trying to figure that out. This is a great resource for you. So definitely reach out to your um, your local library. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, lots of uh, you said live programming, plays, music, things like that for for our students and our parents. I mean, let's not forget us. So uh, pro, uh, summer's coming up. You got the you're, you already got the Sunshine State books ready to go. Uh, like you said, or, wink, wink. I think most of those people had to, like, as soon as the, the, the time turned to two, 2021, you probably had to get those uh, ordered. Yeah, because the official list comes out, I think, next month. And so as soon as that official list hits the ground, um, that's typically when I encourage parents to go on there and start placing holds for the summer. And will they be able to find that out on Facebook, like when they're going to be released? Or will that be Yes, and we uh, we we actually post post the lists as well um, on the library's website, and we'll post it on Facebook. Awesome, good. So parents, caregivers, jump on there uh, if your if your kids are looking for those books, and uh, you can go on uh, Hillsborough County Public Library org and find out where your nearest library is. There's amazing stuff. As Amy Marie said, next week we're going to hit on our parents and our caregivers and all the, and there's so many resources I, I was, didn't even thought of. I was, I was amazed. I was kind of looking through it kind of, and uh, I know Jen has shared some stuff with me and I would, I, I had no idea of all the free resources that you have. So we're super excited to um, promote that for sure. Absolutely. 100%. So uh, if, if uh, there's still more questions out there and did we get all the questions, by the way, there was a lot of, a lot of chatter here tonight. I think I think Jeffrey and Stephanie did a great job of answering a lot of them. They did. They did. Did they? Good for them. Yeah, there. You had them working hard. Yeah. So, um, but if you have any questions, again, reach out to the the library. You can reach out to us, and we'll get you in, in touch with them. Connection. We want everyone to utilize the library. What are the, what? It's not a secret, but we just don't really think about it as much. And to to know how many amazing. Uh, opportunities you have to do so much more than just reading. Uh, so we're thankful for you coming on tonight. We're going to have you hopefully again next week. Is that the yes. plan? Yes. Okay. Yep, you get stuck with me again. Ah, uh, it works. So, uh, no. It works. It's, it's awesome. You're awesome. <laughs> yes, absolutely. On. And uh, we'll be talking about parents, caregivers, the, the programs, the services that are, that are allotted to them as well. And in the meantime, if we had, if anybody has questions about stuff from tonight. I'm sure we can answer it again next week. We will actually have free giveaway bags at our PTA in motion from the library. So we gave them out at our last walk. So we still have a few leftovers. So um, they're awesome. They're full of all sorts of fun goodies. So if you do come to our walk, you'll get a free. Yes, we are very thankful. Um, uh, Shelly and her crew uh, gave us uh, some, some bags with a awesome. lot of goodies in there to give out free of charge. April 10th is our walk. Is that right? Yes. And it's uh, first come, first serve on the bags. Yes. And uh, 
and very, and uh, so very good. I don't want to, I don't want to give away anything for next week, but we want to make sure everybody is excited for next week. Yeah. Um, Shelly, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. We appreciate uh, all the information you gave us. Um, we're excited uh, to, to have a great foundation of our community, uh, still connecting with our students and our parents, even in times like this, you, you're, you guys are accessible with so many different uh, ways for our students to, to just reach out and get more information and educate and have fun. Amy, anything else? I don't think so. All right. I'm sure there's more, but I'll, I'll remember later. <laughs> Yeah, well, you'll thank call me you later. so much. I can't thank you guys enough for having me on here tonight. So I really appreciate it. And I also forgot to say that PTA is a huge deal and you guys do an incredible amount of work to ensure that our educators and our students are supported in all of our schools in Hillsborough County. And that's not something that should be taken lightly because you guys do that out of the kindness out of your hearts and out of the drive and the will to ensure that all students in Hillsborough County are successful. And I think that's a huge deal. Thank you. You know, too bad nominations are closed. I would have just nominated her. For I know, I'm totally nominating her. Well, your role, I'm busy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And, and it means a lot because, um, and I know I've known Amy a long time. Uh, she is one of the most passionate, energetic people. You, what you see is what you tell. get. And it's, it's all right. because she truly loves our students and our teachers. And I, I'm, we are so thankful to have her and so many more people on our board, but the kind words, we really appreciate those. So sure. we will see you next week and thank you very much. And uh, we will talk to you all of you soon.